biggest challenge for you getting to where you are? What advice would you give to people that potentially maybe go through similar challenges in their world? My biggest challenges came before this level of education. So my, like the fact that I made it through school is reliant on the fact that I went to a school where other people were going to get kicked out first. I was just too far down the list. Um, and I made it through sixth form because I had certain teachers who put their neck on the line and I had to do an extra year and all kinds of stuff happened. Um, and, and for me, I think one of the challenges is I have ADHD. Um, I told my teachers that I thought I had ADHD when I was about 15. I was like, no, you're just rude. Um, and it was at uni, uh, a lecturer says, she says, uh, I don't need to take this the wrong way, or something's not right with you. Um, but she was, you know, depending on what you call right with you, she, could, she was correct. And if we, if we approach a situation like something might be amiss or something might be wrong, going back to what David just said in there, what can we do in the system to create a school that is more functional for those people, rather than asking those people to be more functional for our school, a lot more people will be successful. And I know, as a teacher, I have never worked at, in a school I am not confident would have kicked me out as a student. Every single one of them would have kicked me out. So there's something there for us to think about, you know, at what point are we, are we kind of turning off the switch on, on potential. Uh, in terms of in school and my journey as a teacher, I think the hardest thing has been uh, not telling people, not cussing people out, which I've managed to do. I'm very happy with that. I, I, I live by a motto of target-driven behavior. So rather than thinking about what I want to do, think about what I want to achieve and what I need to do to achieve it. And normally the thing that we want to do does not achieve the thing that we want to achieve. It's often detrimental. So when you want to say, yo, you're talking nonsense or that's, sometimes I want to say, yo, you're being racist, you know, big man. You can't say that because I know what's going to happen is the doors are going to close up. They're going to go, no, 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 no. You can't say that, you can't say that. And we move further away from progress. So instead I say, you thought about how that might sound from this perspective or what that looks like and, and unpick. When I really, it's not my job to unpick their nonsense, but I know we get closer to where I'm trying to get. Speaking about your uh, experience in school, being diagnosed with ADHD, I'm sure many of us in this room will understand that there's a genetic history of misdiagnosing mm. black children, mm. and they might continue to perpetuate that cycle of misdiagnosing our children. So how do you feel? I, I, I think it's more important to think about how we support students with those additional things, because here's what I will say. No child, in my experience, has ever been diagnosed as autistic or ADHD. And if the, if the support for them is right, got a worse deal. The issue is we diagnose people with ADHD and then say, oh, they've got ADHD, so they're naughty. So then we, we, we treat them worse. But the reality is those kids don't get a worse deal with the diagnosis, in my experience. So when I go into a room and I've got a naughty student and I've got an ADHD student, I can say to the member of staff, well, have you done all of these things you're meant to do to support that ADHD child? If there's no, there's nothing to hang that on, I'm saying, well, are you giving, are you chunking your instructions? Are you taking your time? Are you giving non-verbal cues? Well, why would I do that? I don't do it for anyone else. Because there's nothing there to hang that, that need on, you don't get that support, which is why I say we'd be better at schools I deliver training on how to support ADHD children. It's just how to support children. No children has ever suffered because you broke the, the instructions down. No child has ever suffered because before you bawl out their name across the class, you walk over to them and go, Nathan, have you thought about, you know, getting on task? No, no kid ever went, oh, well, because Miss spoke to me so calmly and, and with politely, I got mad. It's always, oh, so shouting at me, trying to embarrass me across the class. So I think what the issue is, we sometimes get the label none of the support. So, stay in Chatham School. Mm -hmm. It's just not fair. But you let them know that it's going to be students that are subject to the mistreatment. How do you deal with that? Do you just not deal with it? No, no. Um, the reason, I stayed for quite a while because of that reason. Uh, and literally, I've, I've done a lot of work around mental health. It was the first time in my life, I felt the physical manifestation of anxiety. So I thought to myself, if I don't leave now, I'm not gonna help those kids. I'm, I'm now, I'm moving out of being useful to anybody because I'm just mad and anxious and stressed all the time. Did that help those students? Not necessarily, but I wasn't helping those students. So there's that, there's that kind of thing you can't feel from an empty cup. <laughs> Thank you.